there's a little bit of uh, like a delay, but uh, I think I think we're good to go. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever live streamed, so we'll see how this goes. There's a little bit of uh, like a delay, but uh, I think I think we're good to go. I don't know. This is the first time I've ever live streamed, so we'll see how this goes. And now I'm just like listening to myself. Okay. All right. All right. I'm good. I'm good to go. So hey, uh, how's it going, everyone? Um, I appreciate the uh, the five viewers that are watching this. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and uh, supporting me, supporting my channel. It's been roughly, I, I would say, a few months in the making here. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the thousand subscribers. I really, I actually never thought that would kind of happen, as corny as that sounds. But uh, yeah, I, I, you know, here, I'm here to answer any questions uh, and also tell you about my future plans regarding this channel and just the network, the platform that I'm building. Now, let me see here. While I'm waiting, the, is the is it like? Oh man, this is this is interesting. Hold on here. Nah, I think it's good. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. I, I'm here to answer any questions. So if you guys want to uh, want me to answer any of your questions, I'm here. I'm here to. I'm here to answer them. All right, here we go. Finally got a question. All right, so um, Niga Higa, like the name, by the way. That's a, that's a good YouTuber. I think that's a, unfortunately, YouTube, I feel like, has kind of gone a different direction than Niga Higa, but I like the name. Uh, he says he's a student, and a a he's getting a degree in uh, computer applications, and so how do you think I can land a job after my degree? Yeah, so... One of the things that I recommend students, and if I'm sure a few of you I've already seen or have been on a call with me, one of the things I really recommend is right now in your learning process to start uh, an IT side project. Uh, the, the, the side project uh, idea is really about coming up with almost like a passion project. It's something that you can show on your resume. It's something that's a little bit extra. Uh, and so there are some ideas that I can give you in terms of IT side projects. But honestly, one of the things that, um, so first off, you have the IT side project. And then second off, um, in terms of, you know, getting a job and landing a job after you get a degree, I would say that the second most important thing is going to be um, getting um, a, uh, I'm sorry, get networking with people. So networking with people uh, is going to be really important. Going to networking events wherever you are at, whether you're at uh, a local meetup or I'm sure there's meetups around your local community, college, uh, clubs, things of that nature. So networking and IT side projects are really going to be the most most important thing. Man, it's 3 a.m. in Indonesia and you're up for my live stream. I feel, uh, feel rather, rather special today by uh, Muhammad. Ooh, I have a Skype message. Hold on. I haven't checked my Skype. Hold on here. Let's see here. Okay, a recommendation. Uh, recommendation is to keep the video sh to keep my videos short, roughly seven, seven to. Huh. Hold on here. Oof. 
Hold on. Okay. Anyway, I think I'm good. I don't know. This live streaming stuff is all new to me. So this is going to be... This is basically just like a testing experiment. Anyway. Um, let's see. So Nikahiga adds on, saying that he he wants to learn... Or I'm thinking about learning Python, play CTFs, and learn, learn more about networks, and after getting certifications like CEH or OS... CP so I can bulletproof my resume. Yeah, that's a great idea. I think CTFs. I'm in the process of publishing an article. Okay, that that's that was uh, that just happened. Um, no, I think CTFs uh, are going to be really important. Uh, I think the um, I, I'm 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 in the I'm in the process of publishing an article. Uh, and I've contacted a whole bunch of professionals, and CTFs are really critical. They say that it's, that plays a big, important role. Uh, the CEH or the OSCP, great certifications. If, if I were to recommend one, I'd go with the OSCP. They have you do a lot more experiments, labs, virtual labs, uh, than the CEH. But either of those certifications are good. And let's see here. Yeah, and, and, and regarding the, the bulletproofing your resume, I definitely agree, like, getting your certifications, playing CTFs, uh, having a Python project, like a side project, and then learning more about networks, uh, that's really, yes, I agree, that, that would bulletproof your resume for sure, especially getting a few certifications throughout the, uh, throughout your, your time uh, as a student and during the curriculums. <clears throat> Alrighty, new question. Phil Tran, the computer science course I'm taking up offers two paths for specialization, advanced computer science or data science. What type of opportunities do each of these provide uh, in post-education? So when you're talking about post-education, uh, post I'm guessing you mean either graduate school or just getting a career, or, or, or transitioning into a career. Um, so advanced computer science or data science advanced computer science yeah that's 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 important um, that's definitely a, a great so in terms of what types of opportunities for advanced computer science first off I recommend that if you are going to major with a career regarding cybersecurity you either go into computer science or information systems or cybersecurity so advanced computer science is really going to give you uh, as, as the as I recommended, um, it's going to give you a lot of knowledge behind programming, which is super important uh, in the cyber industry. If, as you can see from my series, I have um, my programming series. I have two two videos out so far. I have another one coming out tomorrow. And the whole idea behind programming is there's a lot of programming in cybersecurity, and I think there's maybe a misconception at times about what careers in cybersecurity can offer. So in terms of the opportunities for advanced computer science, uh, you're really going to be able to at least get, um, I don't know, I, I, more knowledge. Oh, and then in, in terms of computer science, and, and what is the degree, if I do mind asking, like advanced computer science, is it called advanced computer science? Um, or I guess it's the specialization. And then data science, again, another great, great field. If, I, if, if it were up to me, I would go to advanced computer science. I think that's going to help you in the long run. I think it's more scalable uh, for our careers in cybersecurity than a data science. But a degree is a degree, so it's not really going to matter. Hey, what's up, Bloodthirsty? How's it going? Um, by IT side project, uh, Nigahiga again. By IT side project, do you mean... That's something like making my own scripts, applications, um, because one of the people I followed to, one of the people I followed to, uh, Metasploit, Metasploit Framework Side Project can really so tell me about it. Yeah, Metasploit, I haven't messed around with Metasploit. Um, 
but I do definitely agree. That's a great, that's a great idea in terms of IT side projects. In terms of like making your own scripts, applications, ETC, I would, I would rather see you do Metasploit in the Metasploit framework as a side project. Uh, I think recruiters would, like you said, find that uh, more valuable. In terms of develop, yeah, like in terms of developing your own scripts and applications for Python, like building your own applications. Uh, in terms of like, like let me hear, hold on here, let me go up. Yeah, so for instance, one of the things that Nigahiga said was certifications, which is good, CTS, which you can show, Python. That's where the project is going to need to come in. You need an IT side project for Python. So developing applications and scripts in Python is good in terms of, of developing an IT side project. Because the certifications, you can show what their worth is, and so the C so as the CTFs. Is it true? Uh, hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if that, if that doesn't answer your question, I, I, can, I can advance. I just want to make sure that I, I'm answering your questions as, as at least is the depth of knowledge I, I have, right? I'm not an expert, I'm a student, so. Is it true that cybersecurity jobs are generally boring? Do you want my honest opinion? Uh, because I will give you my honest opinion. Here's the deal. For cybersecurity jobs, I I think um, I think there's misconceptions. There is there's a lot of people uh, who are thinking that cybersecurity is going to be this great path um, with with I don't know, hacking, and at least the students that I've encountered, they think like they're going to be penetration testers, and which is great. I mean, that's a great field to get into, and it's it's definitely a growing growing field. But the thing that I emphasize always is entry level careers. So developing an entry level career is really important. Um, so 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 are cybersecurity jobs boring? I would say entry level cybersecurity jobs are going to be more boring than other jobs. Yes, I agree. I think that. Cybersecurity jobs can be boring. It depends on the level of interest and the passion you have. Uh, but I definitely think that cybersecurity jobs are genuinely like genuinely boring at the beginning, unless you have an interest or passion. Something I talk about. Um, so uh, to expand on Phil Tran's side, the degree is Bachelor of Computer Science with specialization in yes. Okay, so the degree. I would say is go into advanced computer science. I think that's the way to do it. I think um, there's definitely areas where you're going to be able to expand, and it it doesn't hurt. I think honestly that advanced computer science is going to be the the way to go in terms of finding uh, a depth of knowledge. Okay, what area of security am I am I interested in? Okay, I, I don't know. I'm still in the exploratory phase, but I, ironically, as I say all that, you guys probably think I'm a hypocrite. I probably want to go into penetration testing. Like I said, it does require the fundamentals as I talk about. So it, it's something that I really want to continue to expand upon and probably doing the penetration testing route, especially this upcoming semester. I'm really going to hone in on these technical skills is what I'm going to do in terms of my future. Yeah, and so the, the the internship that I had this past summer, uh, the the internship, the day in the life of a cybersecurity intern, the one that, well, let's just say most people thought that was rather boring, which I, I won't I won't disagree. It, it can seem boring. Uh, that was a lot of the auditing, policy documentation. It was a whole different yeah policy frameworks development. It was a whole different side of IT. So I, when I get when I got into this internship, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna be developing scripts and coding and no. It was a lot of just policy documentation, auditing, but it was great to see that that side of the of the security. I read it. I was reading a report the other day that it's like fifty five percent. I guess in 2018, 2019, 55 percent of businesses are in need of security managers, and these security managers are going to be doing a lot of the auditing and policy frameworks. Ismael Rodriguez asks, uh, "What is the best entry level position?" Um, if I want to go into admin in cybersecurity, I'm currently my bachelor's. Okay. Yeah, so good. You're getting your bachelor's degree. Uh, that's definitely a degree. Is a degree, like I say. So definitely go for your college degree. I think that's that. The, I recommend that highly. That's what I'm doing. Uh, if you wanted, if you want to, the best entry level position 
the most common entry level position and the best one, if you want to be an admin in cybersecurity, is going to be cybersecurity analyst. Uh, that's going to be your, your go to. It's the, it's the most common entry level and that's the one that's scalable. You can go into multiple paths. You could go into penetration testing off of, of, uh, of, of security analyst. You can go in any, you can go into many routes. Uh, you can go into the management side. Uh, so that, that's going to be your best, best bet. Okay. Uh, I will check. I have seen uh, DC CyberSec, and I will check his. I have. I will check his channel out. I'll put that in my bookmarks. I. I, I haven't. I mean, I've checked his channel out, but I haven't uh, done much research into what his channel does. I know that he, for uh, I see. Uh, I know that he uh, did an interview, I believe, with engineering explained or engineering truth rather which is where i think i found him uh develop it was like a interview on developing careers in cybersecurity. yeah i know that he's he's got a lot more experience than me so definitely something i'll check out links to the recommendation appreciate it the problem is i live in him yeah so that's an interesting uh in terms of Nika Higa, as, as you expanded, um, as you expanded with that, I, I definitely agree that like I, I'm seeing this even in my college curriculum. So there's students uh, in, in in my I'm uh, an undergraduate in cybersecurity. Okay, there's a lot of students right now who have there's both there's students who are just following a degree, following this uh, sort of uh, the curriculum, and they're getting good grades, which is great. They're making good grades, uh, and that's a great route to go. And then I see other students who are getting two seven two eights, but they're really they're really um they're working on their side projects and passion projects or you know they're they're really honestly they have skills. They have applicable skills in the industry. And guess what? Those are the people that companies, at least this thus far into the semester, have approached in terms of getting internships and jobs because they like to see the skill. I think though that you will need a a some sort of formal qualification unless you have a really good project that shows you have skill, and that's where I I go back to the project idea. But I definitely think that there is a a, a need at least in some formal qualification to show that you've completed something to its entirety, whether that be a, a certification. It needs to be a little bit more of an advanced certification. It can't be the CompTIA A plus. I would say the CEH, OSCP, uh, things of that nature. If I prepare for the CCNA, is it been, so I haven't taken the CCNA. I don't know necessarily what's on that. It is highly desired in the industry and it's not going to hurt you. I think that's probably one of the better uh, certifications you should go for in terms of, because it's, again, it's applicable and it's, you can, you will need to know the networking side. So I think the CCNA is important and it is beneficial. Uh, and I, I, yeah, I would say that, that from the CCNA standpoint. Without getting too political, what do you think of China's hack of the 50 plus companies? This Yeah, regarding com China's hack of fifty plus companies, I'm first off, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's it's China. Um, you know what's interesting is I think, in, in my opinion, Americans in general, as I look at the news, are like, oh my goodness, China is is hacking hacking us. What's going on? We're doing the same. We're doing the same. I think I I believe uh, the books that I've read. I believe United States. The NSA, we're all doing the same thing. Um, it may not be reported, but in terms of China's hack of 50 plus companies, it just goes to show you that we are in a dire need of skilled cybersecurity professionals. Not just these lukewarm professionals who are just going to go get their degree, but people who are skilled. And so, how do you get skilled, right? Certifications and actually applying yourself through pro the use of projects exercises. Uh, I will be making a few videos in advance um, in terms of 
how to expand your skills and develop your skills because I keep saying, oh, you just need to develop an IT side project. Well, what does that mean exactly? So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a video coming up here. Ooh, this is a good question. Do you prefer to take notes with pen and paper or uh, digitally during lectures? I, I like to take them usually digitally. Digitally, usually. Um, what has been the most effective? Aha. Uh, I would say definitely mm, the pen and paper is not, I mean, it's traditionally the better way to do it. But what I do is I usually print out my, um, I print out my lecture notes and then I review them. That's what I usually do. Uh, so I think probably better speaking, I would say pen and paper, but digitally during lectures, um, or I'm, my bad, I'm sorry, uh, doing notes or taking notes digitally and then printing them out and then reviewing them before exam day is what I do. <clears throat> okay. Can you suggest a practical pen testing course for beginners? Uh, yeah, so I recommend the complete cybersecurity course. I'm sure you guys all know that. I'm making a video coming up about the review of the complete cybersecurity course. Uh, this is a good. This is a good question. It's more theoretical than practical. You know, the the the, the thing that I stress the complete cybersecurity course is it's just the idea of getting the fundamentals. Is it something that you're interested in? Cybersecurity itself. I think like I like I said, a lot of students just will jump right into a college curriculum. There's nothing wrong with that. That's that's what. You can always change your major, but understanding the fundamentals in cybersecurity or just, you know, understanding what the industry has to offer is why I, I recommend the complete cybersecurity course. Regarding uh, a practical pen testing course for beginners, you know, honestly, I, right now, I know this is going to sound like a, a promotional, I, I recommend Station X still. Uh, they have, I'm going to look this up really quickly, but they have their own, uh, they don't just have the, um, hold on here. The complete cybersecurity course, and this is why I recommend you buy on Station X compared to Udemy, because I know Udemy is cheaper. But if you uh, go to Station X, they have hacking and penetration testing. They have 15 courses. Uh, I think these are really great courses, and uh, they have like bundle packs, and that's what I use. I just buy the bundle, and then I follow it from there. Uh, these are rebranded Udemy courses, most of them, I believe. But honestly, they're just all here. This is why I like Station X, because it's just, it's all here. Uh, I know I'm, I know you guys can't see my screen, but it's it's just all in one platform, all in one website, and I like that over Udemy. Okay. So that's why I recommend StationX.net going to their courses. Okay, so stuff by spending. Okay, so regarding tutorials, I'm, I know this is another promotional thing. I am going to make a video regarding the resources that I have found helpful, like YouTubers uh, and, and channels that I find helpful, and websites as well. Um, spending less money and, and, and rather for free. I mean, you know, the, free, the biggest free, the, the, most, the best free resource out there right now is Cybrary. I believe, in terms of getting training for certifications, uh, I think it's a great uh, platform to utilize if you want free training. If you want good, if you want decent training, I always recommend Pluralsight. I've checked that out. It's pretty good. I like Pluralsight. Pluralsight, uh, I have a review on my website of that, both of those. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry, not Cybrary, but Pluralsight. Interesting. So I'm reading, I, I'm reading Chip. That's what I'm just gonna say. I'm reading Chip's comment, and that that is an interesting, that's an interesting comment right there. Regard. Yeah, I remember you. I remember you, Bloodthirsty. You you're not weird. You're not a weird guy. You were you were nice, and and, uh, and I appreciate the time. 
and this is not a promotional thing either, but if you guys want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I'm open and it's free right now. Honestly, I, I know I created a video a few weeks ago thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to mix, you know, I can charge. No, I'm not going to charge for my services right now. It's, I'm not that big. So if you guys want to have a one-on-one -on -one session, I can give you more personal advice. Uh, I'm here and uh, just let me know, email me and uh, we can connect through Skype or Discord. So my journey regarding this position, so I'm a full-time student, an undergraduate student, and that's basically what I, uh, what I do, or full-time right now anyway, which is, well, it's full-time. And uh, the, how did I get here? Okay, so when I was younger, I really wanted to com uh, major in computer science, thinking that I was going to be a computer science major and go to school for computer science and then just get a job in programming. Um, I, what is interesting is I, I, I found, I found out that the, um, that programming wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. Not to say that I don't like programming. I like programming, I like scripting, but I, 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 I just, I didn't think I had, had what it takes to, uh, to graduate with a degree in computer science. So I, I, Luckily, have some connections through my network of people who are in cybersecurity, and I sat down with them, and they were telling me about the careers and certain areas, and cybersecurity sounded interesting. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to go to school for cybersecurity, and uh, that that's it. I'll go to school, and I'll be done. Uh, and when I realized my senior year of high school, I realized at this point, well, I can't just go to college and get a degree in cybersecurity and be this successful person. I have to self-study. I have to use a lot, utilize a lot of self-study. And so I have done a lot of self-study. And the, some of the, the biggest thing, the, the, uh, the, the thing that I have recognized in this industry, and I've talked about this, is experts, they're great. They're great guys to listen to. They know exactly how to get started in cybersecurity. But there's a lack of connection, at least I think. Uh, there's a lack of connection and so that's really, honestly, uh, how I, I came up to build Cyber Intern Academy and this YouTube channel. It's just uh, building connection via students. Do you participate in any extracurricular activities outside of school? I, I, uh, there's a cyber defense club at my school. I, I'm not in it right now because I don't think I am skilled enough. But... Uh, I there there's a computer science club that I participate in, there's, and then there's there's the running club um, and a few other organizations that that are not in particular to cybersecurity. They're just general general organizations, uh, just kind of like networking organizations, student organizations. How does CTF CTF help us if we want to get into cybersecurity? So CTF is a way to apply your knowledge. Uh, it's a great, the OSCP uh, certification has the CTFs uh, involved, CTF labs. It's a great way to, to test your knowledge and apply your skill. That's basically what it's CTFs are really known for. Uh, I'll probably be doing some videos in the future about CTFs and about how they, they work. Um, yeah, if you guys want to see something like that. I'm not going to lie, so there's 10 people watching this, this live stream right now, and it's just weird. It's, it's a different dynamic than just making a video and editing it. It's just a little different. I always thought, oh yeah, live streaming is easy, or you know, it's, it's, it's the same as making a video, but it's a little bit different. You're, you're actually like responding to comments, and, and uh, I don't know, it's, it's very interesting. Don't make me in, yeah. Second semester of my freshman year at college, I failed three subjects, so I study for those. Oh my goodness. I gave the exam for... Dang. Niga Higa, you sound like you've had a, a journey. And you passed, though. That's good. That's good stuff. 
And what do you suppose we should know before starting the CTF? If you want my on- ooh, that's actually a good- that is a good topic to make a video on. Thank you for that topic idea. In terms of knowing what you should know before pursuing the CTFs, uh, I, this is going to be a very general answer, and I know it's probably the one that you don't want to know. Uh, general cybersecurity fundamentals, I would say, you need to learn how, um, it, I guess depending on the CTF, you need to learn Linux, Kali Linux to be exact. Um, you need to learn how to script, bash, Python, uh, and you need to be very efficient with the tools in Kali Linux, or the Linux, or the penetration testing platform that you prefer. I'm not gonna lie to you. The, the 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 quality of this stream is not very good, but that's probably because the internet is not very good. So that's that is also another thing I'm not to work on. This is this is basically like a testing live stream. Now, okay, so I am not a cybersecurity intern right now. I'm a full time student. I was a cybersecurity intern, um, but my exact role. Uh, there's a YouTube video that I created telling what I did in cybersecurity. It, the, the official title was IS Security Intern, Information Systems Security Intern. So it was that whole side, that whole part of that domain, uh, of the management side of the domain, the compliance side of the domain. Uh, hold on here, let me pull up. Hold on here, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the cyber, I looked up the cyber, if you, if you guys have ever seen the cybersecurity domains mind map, it's a really good map. Um, I was basically, I was on the governance side and the risk assessment side of cybersecurity. Uh, there, there's also like the security operations, uh, but really honestly, I was on the compliance, auditing, things of that nature, procedure, policy, standard guidelines. As an, as an intern, I wasn't, uh, let's just say I wasn't doing the, the, the most the best, most sophisticated tasks in the world. A lot of comments on my my YouTube video were like, oh my goodness, he's using Windows 10 and he's a security intern. Uh, but that's just, I don't know, that, that that's what they gave me. I couldn't, couldn't control that. You know, I, have, I do have a question for the nine people watching this stream. Uh, the question is, what can I, and I know I've, I've told this to other, I've, uh, ask this to the students doing one-on-ones, what, what can I be doing better as a student uh, and as a person on YouTube? What can I be doing better to help you guys uh, transition into a career in cybersecurity, know exactly what's going on, whatever, exactly, whatever you guys, what is, what is it that I can be doing better? I always like to hear that. Yeah, so why do, oh, by the way, for Christmas, I'm getting a huge monitor. So I'm going to have like the same monitor. This is a comment I just got received. It says, why do why do uh, many cybersecurity guys keep two to three labs or desktops in front of them? And that, yeah, so th there's certain reasons why. I don't know. It's honestly just more efficient. Uh, in terms of like, if you have like a tiny little computer screen, like the laptop that I have, it's a tiny computer screen. Uh, it's more efficient to have three screens and it depends on what you're doing. It depends on the position. I guess, let's say this, if you're doing policy, you only need one screen because you're going to be working in Microsoft Word. But if you're, you're doing other thing, um, other tasks, like you're a pen tester, then you will be doing things that require multi-applications. Um, or multi multitasking with applications. There you go. There you go. What gear are you using in the mo at the moment? Okay, so I have a cheap random. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's see if I can do this. All right. So there's a rare. This is like a cheap. It's called the Velocifier Mechanical uh, Blue Switches Keyboard. It's the really clicky one. Uh, I, and I, I don't know if I can really like show it, but it's a, it's, you know, 40 bucks, not, not, uh, not too 
too shabby in terms of the pricing. It's it's cheap though. Um, I have the Lenovo X1 ThinkPad. I'm going to be doing a review on that. Uh, I think it's a great laptop to use. Regarding college, it, the reason why I don't like have a gaming laptop is because, I don't know, I get to haul that all the way around. So uh, I have that, and I have the Audio-Technica's, uh, let's see, ATX, oh man, this is bad. This is really sad that I don't even know that the Audio-Technica's. MH40s, that's, oh my goodness, this is really sad that I, hold on here. There we go. ATHM40X. My god, I, I don't know why I couldn't even remember that. And then I'm getting a huge Dell screen for my for Christmas, so I'll have two of those. I have one in my dorm right now. And yeah, that's the gear. And what kind of gear do I what do I want to upgrade with? Nothing at the moment. I kind of hope I kind of wish that I could have a desktop maybe build a server off of it. I have my old gaming PC uh, that I may use, but um, yeah, that's the only thing that I can, comes to mind right now. Do I game? Uh, let's see, hold on here. All right, so, um, okay. So do you like math subjects? I do like math. Uh, am I very good at math? No, well, I'm not very good at math. Uh, well, I mean, I'm okay at math. I'm obviously good enough to get through the curriculum that I have at my school. I'll be doing a video on my curriculum, by the way, at my school, um, with what the, 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 the classes that, I'll be, that I've taken and that I will be taking in the future. It, regarding the the um, math, yeah, like, so for instance, the reason why I don't think I could have gotten through computer science was because I don't think I could have gotten through calculus too. Uh, so I'm good at math, but not like very good at math. Um, but do I like the math subjects? Yeah, they're all right. I would rather have more applicable skills and I appreciate the feedback in terms of like I'm, I'm doing okay and, and I'm, I, I appreciate that. Doing a tutorial series, yeah, so that would be a great good idea. Doing a, maybe a tutorial series. What would you like? What would you like to see at Voice Crack? What do you What do you like to uh, see on a, like on a tutorial series? Um, like the cyber. I know like Colin Kelly. If you guys don't follow him, go follow him. He's a great. He's a great guy. He's also somebody who's a student, um, similar to me. In fact, I'm sure he's way more knowledgeable than I am. Uh, but he does a cybersecurity fundamentals course. He's had three videos so far. What do you What do you think? Like, what, what kind of video series would you like guys like to see? Uh, I was thinking about maybe like making. This is gonna be sound weird, but like maybe making like a Udemy course almost with about regarding like the cybersecurity fundamentals or like applying cybersecurity in everyday life, but I don't know. That's not really applicable to cybersecurity students and careers. In terms of programming languages, okay, can I know what all programming languages do you know and also what, okay, do you know, okay. All right, so I'm gonna be completely honest with the programming languages that I do know, HTML, CSS, uh, and I know that those are hyperlink uh, markup text languages. Uh, not hyperlink, my goodness. Uh, those are markup, and in the uh, the only other language I'm really proficient in is Python. I know it's sad. Like I've maybe given you guys advice and like learning PHP and assembly. Oof, I couldn't couldn't do assembly, but honestly, it's Python. That's the only other one I'm really proficient in. Oh, and Bash, Bash too, Bash scripting. I really want to learn PowerShell as well, um, and JavaScript. I need to do that. My tutorial series says I need to do all these things, and I, I really do need to be learning the programming languages. Um, and what operating systems do I know? I'm eh, I'm moderate in Kali Linux. It, I'm a Windows 10 user. <laughs> no, I'm a Windows 10 user for, for front end kind of things. I really want to learn like good in terms of like Linux. I definitely want to become a lot more proficient this semester in Linux. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, that 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 is that's what I'm in. I've been doing great with the upload rate since winter break. Okay, now this is gonna sound crazy. I'm thinking about doing one video a day. So like making one video day this semester to build up this channel even even greater, uh, having it from just like a small, you know, just doing a few videos a week to every a, vi a video every single day this semester to grow this channel. I, I don't know if you guys would, would think about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I also have another question 
for for anyone who is and I appreciate that comment he got in terms of t telling me I have potential in my channel in terms of my website Cyber Intern Academy it's I know it's not a technical technically based website but what do you guys th if you guys have checked that website out what do you guys think about that and fix the damn Ethernet yeah that's a good idea too I I know that uh, I don't know necessarily how this live stream is looking right now but that is n definitely something I need to look into too this is remember this is my first live stream um, streams lagging real bad okay that that is something to thank you thank you very much uh, to let me know that um, consider okay you know what here's what I'm gonna do hold on uh, to see if this works. Whoa. It changed to this tiny little screen. I don't know if that's obviously going to do anything. I just like changed the quality, but I don't think that's going to do anything. Uh, okay. I, I, I feel, feel bad for just leaving these questions go now. Um, I'm going to fix this. Uh, we're going to do another live stream here soon, and I'm going to fix all this stuff so that I can actually do a quality live stream. This is my first one, so uh, I don't know. I, I guess I guess I can. I know this is kind of sad that I don't know, I know how do you, like, I don't live stream. Let's see here. Configure. Oh, yeah, you know what? Just, just screw it. Okay. So, can I tell you the guys the name of the YouTube channel that, uh, yeah, here, here's the, I'm catching up in comments now, Colin Kelly, Colin Kelly is the guy who, uh, who is right now working on, uh, building his channel as well, great guy, Python, yep, Python is the way to go, I love Python, it's the, the, the starting language I recommend. Oh, you need to learn Bash. Any resources that you can recommend? Yes, I will see. I will be building tomorrow. Just wait for tomorrow's video, and you will find the link down below. It's on Station X. It's cheap. It's a cheap course, and I love it. Loved love the course. It's taught by Jason Cannon, if I if I can recall. Uh, let's see, bro. What's the difference between shell and the terminal? So I'm guessing you mean PowerShell in the terminal. Uh, yeah, so PowerShell, I, I believe, okay, now don't take this as the, but PowerShell is the, um, it's Windows based, it's, it's based off, it's Microsoft produced. A terminal, I guess, is used, it can be used, um, but the, the, the shell, PowerShell is going to be, it's, it's a little bit, okay, I don't necessarily know, but I think it, it it's a better, it's just a, uh, hold on here, let me think about this for a moment. PowerShell is better for doing scripting and automating things of that nature. It's it was made and produced by Microsoft for those reasons. But as you can tell, PowerShell has been in the news with regarding exploitation. So good job to Microsoft. Uh, and the terminal is just it's uh, a downgrade version in a way. But don't take those. I, I don't necessarily know because I don't know PowerShell. I've only I've only coded in, I've only uh, scripted with Bash. So don't don't take those words as as the end all be all, and it probably now sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about regarding regarding all this stuff, but yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, and uh, I will. I'll be creating a video, personal experiences, the ups and downs, and the regret, for sure. Consider okay, and uh, you know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. Hold on here. This is what I'm gonna do. 
use faster encoding. This is gonna look really bad, but we're just gonna do it. Um, uh, yeah, so quality or quantity in terms of content is definitely for sure something I would like to improve upon. If you've seen my programming series, the last two videos, I've tried to up the quality. It's taken me so much longer. Um, but yeah, that, that in terms of building the quality videos, but I definitely agree quality is better than quantity. I definitely wanna continue though to build as many videos as possible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the, regarding my website, I asked that question earlier. Color scheme basic. Okay, thanks, thanks for the, the feedback, Ngahia, in terms of keeping my color scheme basic. Um, maybe adding, using CSS, Bootstrap, and Jake. Okay, yeah, definitely appreciate that feedback. And I agree with, with Udemy. Um, I don't like Udemy. I hate, in fact, I don't want to go on a rant right now, but Udemy, I hate, I hate how Udemy treats their authors. Like, I, I really like want to put it as a recommended resource because it's such a widely known platform. I can't do it. Like, I just, I can't I recommend Udemy as like the number one resource. Uh, and I know that I recommend Station X, which is a lot of rebranded Udemy courses. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly, I don't know. I, I content. Um, okay, so maybe live stream or upload CDF. Yeah. Okay, so in terms of live streaming and uploading CTFs, yeah, definitely a good idea there. Um, are you, and when when you say more, like quick, when you say live streams, do you mean more live streams? I'm guessing you do. Um, do I have a dream company? Independent cybersecurity company. Okay, so yeah, I want to work for Facebook. Uh, that's the company I want to work for because I really love Facebook. Um, just joking, just joking. I know that that you just said, please do not put Facebook. No, Facebook is no, never gonna work for Facebook. Um, ugh, I hate Facebook. I hate fa I hate I hate social media in general. Even though I'm using YouTube right now, but I, I am not a fan of Facebook. Um, Google, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get into Google to be honest, but I, do I have a dream company to work for? I don't know yet. I, I know it's just sad that I don't even really think about this, um, but I, I think I'm gonna work for my own independent cybersecurity company uh, at the end of the day. Uh, I don't know, I kinda wanna do cybersecurity consulting, cyber, uh, be a security consultant, but I don't really even know what that takes in terms of like how much work that takes. I'm guessing it takes a lot, a lot of, a lot of work. But that's kind of the dream right now. And my email address is collinsinfosec at gmail.com. Subject to change. It's going to be eventually uh, probably like grant at cyberinternacademy.com. But right now it's collinsinfosec at gmail.com. And let's see here. Do shell and terminal have different languages? Interesting. Let's see here. Uh, I, I, I do not, in terms of... Um, let's see, hold on here, I'm sorry. I know this is sad. I... Yeah, in terms of, I, I believe, okay, yeah. They do have different languages, PowerShell, or the power, I'm guessing power, if that's what you mean by PowerShell. And, and terminal, uh, I do believe that they do have different languages or different syntax in terms of writing the syntax. Again, I'm not proficient in PowerShell, so I don't know. Although that that could be wrong. That could be a completely wrong answer. Now that I'm thinking, now I'm looking at this. Now I'm looking at it. Don't don't quote me on that. That's bad. I need I need I need to be working on that not that knowledge because I I don't know. That's kind of sad. I don't know that either. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, in terms of Google, I read some books. Ooh, hold on here. In terms of in terms of books, 
I've read this book by Mark Goodman called Future Crimes. Um, it's about being, basically, it's about data, and it's a really, really uh, great book. I really recommend that. Uh, it's called Future Crimes. It's, it was published two years ago. It's a really good book about data, and you're right about Google. Um, they have so much data, it's insane. Uh, so have I participated in any CTFs in the past? A few. A few CTFs. I, want, I really, really, that's something, again, I really need to be working on CTFs. Uh, again, as I hinted at earlier in this live stream, building up my knowledge base uh, this upcoming semester and, and participating in more CTFs is definitely going to be, definitely uh, something I am going to be interested in and going to be doing. Will PHP ever die out? I don't know. Will it die out? I don't know. See, it was in my recommended. It was in... Yes, I have... Oh, oh, sorry. I have read Ghosts in the Wires. But uh, regarding PHP, they, it was in the video series that I just published. You should learn PHP because it's still used. And I don't really... I, I don't think I'm going to learn PHP, which is, again, kind of sad that I, I'm saying that. But, yeah, I don't think I'm going to learn PHP. Um... But will it die out? I don't know. It's good. And have I read Ghost in the Wires? Yes. Great book. Great book. If you want... Yeah, great. Um, and let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to think about what... Um, what... When, when was Ghost in the Wires published? Mr. Room. Let's see here. Oh. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I know this is come. I'm getting off sidetracked here with with Ghost and Wires. It's a great video. Um, have it? Uh, are you a, a Mr. Robot fan? Uh, eh, kind of. I guess. A kind of. Uh, I mean. Yeah, I... Oh, well, hold on here. It's okay, I guess. It's okay. Is that the right answer? Is, is that... Interesting, interesting. Let's see here. There may have been... No, oh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I really do need to improve this live stream. This is basically a testing round. I'll, I'll come back with a with a better one. Um, anyway, hey, what's up, Gabe481? I, I see that you do, you really comment a lot on my videos about the haters, and I guess I appreciate that. I don't know. I, I think that you almost spawn more hate from the hate comments, but, uh, I guess you must be a, a big fan if you're really interested in that kind of stuff. Anyway, guys, I know this is not not the greatest of live streams, but uh, I'll, I'll come back with a better one. How about with with better with better quality? It's been about an hour, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let let this live stream go. I appreciate everyone who came. I know the the ten or eleven of you. I was really worried that I was gonna get zero out of zero, so appreciate that. Um, yeah, as I continue to grow my my content and the quality of these videos and, and my website, I just I hope to continue to help value and add value to the company. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, or not company, uh, just cybersecurity industry in general. And just to, uh, to anyone who is, um, looking to apply to and for companies. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate, appreciate you guys stopping by. And, um, yeah, I, I think that that's going to end the live stream. Again, I'll come back with a more, better quality, fixing the ethernet, things of that nature. So, um, yeah, I appreciate it, and have a good day.